Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll talk a little bit about the oil samples I took from uh, the cars and the results that came in from the lab about those. Here you can see me taking an oil sample out of the four. The process is similar for all vehicles. You uh, try to take the sample in the middle of the draining process. You send that the oil sample into the lab and you get the result back from the lab in a week or two. So let's start with the black P38, the Range Rover, and see what the lab result says. First we can see that the car and engine is identified. You can see what kind of oil I put in it and the interval and how long I've been driving on that oil. This is all the information that I'm giving them. And then they provide me with a summary on this report that tells me that this engine is doing quite good. There's no harmful contamination. I can do a higher uh, interval if I'd like to. And all these kinds of details and suggestions that they provide to, for me. In this case, it looks like this engine is doing quite good. Comparing my values here on the left in the yellow and the right on the yellow, you can see that my engine is doing really good compared to the average for this kind of engine at this mileage. Finally, at the end is all the important stuff. We have a viscosity, flashpoint, fuel percentage, antifreeze percentage, how much water there is in the oil sample. And this is the part that you want to pay attention to because you don't want any of this stuff in your engine oil. That would indicate either a coolant leak internally in from the head gasket or something like that. So I find these reports really useful and helpful in determining what I need to do to the engine and if I should consider doing some major overhauls to the engine in the near future. Moving on to the green Range Rover. It's the same uh, car with the same kind of oil in it. I've driven it for a little bit longer. However, I haven't done many oil changes on this. This was the first one because I just recently got it. And you can see the comments they provide that they say that this oil is a little bit thick and that the values are a little bit over the average. But I think this could be a result of poor previous maintenance and that the engine needs to be flushed out a few times with this new oil to make sure it's all okay. Again, here on the bottom, you can see the summary of all the important values. Here I circled them in red this time. And as you can see, all the values for antifreeze, water and fuel uh, and stuff like that are well below the average. But besides the oil viscosity being a little bit thick, I think this engine is also doing pretty good. Let's have a look at the Ford Excursion. It has the V8 7.3 power stroke turbo diesel engine in it. Again, all the make and model and the oil grade and the interval is information I provided to the lab. The lab's comments here are that the engine oil is a little bit thin, but there's nothing to be alarmed about. It's just slightly off. Again, they think I could increase the oil change intervals. And you can also see that there's a little bit uh, of aluminum iron in the oil, but that could be because of the driving style I'm doing with this car. This car hasn't been driven that much. It's been standing a lot and doing a lot of idling and short trips and a couple of long trips. So we'll uh, do a new oil report on this car and see if that improves in the future and determine if you need to do any other maintenance for this car. We'll focus on the summary on the bottom and make sure that we're in within the limits and nothing stands out as a problem here too. Next, I'll give you guys a little update on the issue I'm having with the green P38, where we're having this intermittent uh, gas pedal failure, where it doesn't respond anymore to um, gas pedal uh, responses. I replaced the throttle position sensor, the potentiometer that's connected to the gas pedal, because this is a drive-by wire car. Unfortunately, that didn't help anything, but it was cheap and I wanted to just eliminate that kind of problem from the car. Then I switched the engine computer, the management module in the engine bay, between the black P38 and green P38, just to eliminate any problems with the module itself. Unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, because that's a quite expensive part, that didn't help the issue, it's still the same issue. I'll try to demonstrate what happens when this happens. It never happens below 80 km an hour or about 50 miles an hour. It only happens when I'm driving faster than that. And what happens is, if I let go of the gas suddenly while driving, the engine will uh, go back to idle and there's no response from the gas pedal when I try to apply gas again. There's nothing happening. Sometimes, after a few attempts, it will catch and start to rev up again. 
but um, fixed is to put it in neutral and then back in drive. And when this happens, the engine light, check engine light just mm -hmm. flickers. It doesn't stay on, it doesn't record any errors. The only error I've seen in the system is the error code 136, I think, which is the fuel quantity sensor. And um, that is leading me to think that I have to um, replace the fuel pump. So I'll uh, order a new fuel pump, put that back in, I'll make a video about that, and hopefully that fixes it. Next on my update list is uh, a few issues with the um, heating and ventilation AC system on the Green P38. Um, it has a regulation failure for the right side motor, it says. It's actually the left side and the heater core temperature sensor. So I'm replacing the heater core temperature sensor. Here you can see it. It's uh, easy to get that behind the dash, uh, behind the glove box. And I'll also replace the fan motor and I made a video about that earlier, so I'll link that on the, um, up here and in the description. That should take uh, care of uh, most issues I'm having with the ventilation system. The only ones remaining are uh, stuck um, recirculation flaps uh, on both sides in the Green P38. And I think it's the actuator motors that uh, regulates the flaps inside the... Um, the duct here behind the motor that's actually sticking. So I'll just replace those uh, motors sometimes in the future. It's not a vital part of uh, the kind of driving I'm doing to have the recirculation mode uh, to work. The last issue I'm having with the AC system on green P38 is that the um, tensioner is making squeaking noises. So I'm going to replace this um, pulley tensioner. I ordered a new one and put that back in. Today the trailer hitch came in for the green P38. I hope you found this useful and interesting. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Send me some comments. Hit that like button if you like this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.